make an application which does something which does some work that's interesting. Okay. So I think what we want to build is, you know, I was thinking about various APIs we could look at and uh, for data, right? And one of those is GitHub, and everybody has a GitHub account, and so we can get information from GitHub that might be interesting to us. Okay, so using their API, we could discover various things about all of those stuff listed here, okay? You could look at repositories, get data, activities, etc. cetera. Gists, if you've not used a gist, is like a paste bin. It's a place where you can just paste code without creating a whole repo. Um, and we could use this information to collect interesting data about a user. For example, we could find out how many commits a user has made. Okay? So I could find out all of the organizations a single user is a part of. For each of those organizations, find out all the repositories. For each of those repositories, find out all the commits. And then for each of those commits, if it matches the user, add one to a counter. And then I can find out how many commits a user has made across any repository that are an organization is part of. Um, and that might be, might be interesting to me, right? Uh, in particular, I think one of the bits of data that might be really interesting is when you get a particular commit, if I go looking here at the commits, so repositories, commits, get a single commit, there is this interesting bit of data here. So uh, that tells me the lines, uh, additions, deletions, and total. Okay. So when I make a commit in Git, I'm modifying a file. I could be adding a new file. I could be deleting an old file. I could just be modifying an existing file. This is telling me how much of that file I'm changing. Okay. So per file, there's going to be these additions, commits, and deletes. Um, and then there's this total wrapped up in the stats. Right, so this is saying that I added 104 lines, deleted four lines, and changed a total of 108 lines. So what the question that might be interesting is, could I get a per day breakdown for a user of the changes they've made on GitHub to public repositories over time? And then plot that, right? And then I could take multiple users and compare them. And then we can sort of make a game out of this of who has the most commits. Or you not can sell the data to companies wanting to hire programmers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or something like that, exactly, right? And so it's not just the number of commits, but have I actually done real work in the commits? That's the idea. Um, 200,000, that's how much we're charging for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we'll put up a strike and have a monthly fee. And, uh, um, so I think we can build this, okay? I think we can build this, what I just described. Um, and I think in the process of building it, we will discover why we need the next topic, which is the schedule tasks, okay? Because what I just described involves a lot of steps, right, to get this data. So what is a, just an overview, of what does it mean to schedule tasks? When I think about that, I think I want, I got a big thing I need to run, it's got to do a lot of processing, so I'm going to schedule that to run between 12 and 3 a.m. or something. Um, so the uh, a task is, is a sort of unit of work. And when we make a request to a web page map engine, we have 60 seconds to complete that task. If it doesn't complete in that amount of time, it will kill it. Um, and so if we have a task that needs to take longer than 60 seconds, we have to use a task queue. Okay. Um, the schedule part of it is, once I have this idea of a task queue, so I can submit work to a task. I could do that as part of a request, say, go do this, run in the background. And that could take 24 hours or something. It could take a while. Um, once I have that idea, oh, okay, now I can submit work to a task queue. So it's not part of the request anymore. It's its own independent thing. I can also schedule tasks to be done independently of any request at all. I can say, at 3 AM, run this task. Okay. And so therefore, I can build something like this. You know, our initial version might be, I submit the username and it gives me this data. Now I submit my username and every single day it will go reprocess that data. And so it will keep up with me over time, right? And so I can plot every day these things happening. Question? And you can also use it to throw as many machines as you want to at it. So if you have, I mean, if you had a page to look up this long-term task, then you can put the task 
on Q, return something that says it's working. And if that Q gets too long, it'll just fire up more instances and keep pulling stuff off Q. And so, it, it's a better way to distribute resource or tasks among machines um, instead of all having it into one process. Yeah, so examples of applications that do this, uh, GitHub is actually one of them. They do tons of background work. For example, when you do a commit and push it, that push is not an HTTP request. It's done over Git, right? There's a protocol and SSH and stuff. Um, there's a back-end process listening for those connections. It triggers something that re results in the web page being updated, okay? And so all of that is sort of background work that's done as tasks, not as, I think this is responding to a request. Uh, another example that I think people are probably pretty familiar with would be Mint, mint.com. So you add your accounts to it, your bank accounts, and it goes and gets information. It does that every day. It doesn't do that as a, as a result of your request, though it could, you can click, you know, refresh. But it just does it over time on its own, okay? And so they have a giant task queue processing everybody's bank information every day, okay? Um, and that's the, that's the use case, is when you need to do something that's not part of a response to something their user requests for. It. It's something done every day, or if it takes a really long time, Totally. Yeah, okay. um, so we're going to build one, uh, and we're going to try and figure out GitHub commits, okay? Um, so how are we going to start this? Well, I think we already have the first version here for the login, right? The login here with the OAuth example. Because we can log in as a GitHub user using this. Um, all we have to change is this. So right now, all I can get from the API is the user's email. But I'm going to need to get more information from the user. Uh, because I want to see what, mem what organizations they're a part of. And I want to be able to get the commit logs for each of those repos and all that stuff. So we should add more scopes. That'll be the first thing. Um, once we do that, we can use that access token to request more data from the API we'll be able to request the list of repos and all that stuff. And so I think once we change it so we get more scopes, then we'll add more functions to get those various pieces of data. And then we'll have more functions which piece them all together, okay? And then we'll make a front end URL where a user can submit their username or whatever. Or maybe we just do it, we, as soon as you put log in, we do it or something. That will kick off this big, huge task. So maybe we'll start there at the front and work our way back. Um, okay, so I'm going to copy this OAuth example entirely and make a new folder for it and rename it to GitHub example. Okay. Uh, let me hide this. Uh, so we want to create. Uh, I'm going to call it GitHub.go. Um, so I'm just going to call it GitHub example. We should rename the other one to do that as well. And then in here, we're going to copy some of the bits we did in login into here. Okay. So get email and get access token. Those are really eight. GitHub API specific things, okay? So I'm going to copy those and put them in, I'm going to cut them and put them in the other one. Um, so those will go in here. Um, so all we have in here are the handlers. This I'll probably take out and make constant. GitHub specific, and okay. So all I did was, was pull out some of these and put them in into here. Um, okay. So we have the email. I think 
this point, I think we want to redirect to another endpoint. Okay, so if you've logged in successfully, we'll redirect you to resrec, let's call it uh, slash github dash info, and uh, three, two. And so what we'll do is we'll redirect them to github info, and we'll add up here a new handle for that. So this is the page you get to after you've logged in. Uh, what we want to eventually show is either per day or a total of a month or some kind of information that tells you how many additions, deletions, or total changes you've made over some period of time. Okay? So I think what we're heading towards is something like this. I will write string res and then you know we'll have our standard HTML. And we will start with, let's say, in the last month, you have, and we'll have a little table, and say, We didn't know that yet. And then we'll do the same for deletions. So we'll show this little table of how many additions and deletions you've made on GitHub in the last month. Okay. Everybody following? Yes. So in the last month, we have a table that will show this data. So that's step one. Let's make sure that works the way we expect it. Let me um, go to the server here. Start it. And refresh here. There. So we show additions and deletions. So that's step one. Step two is to replace these with something. So let's do that. I think we can do something like additions, deletions, error, git additions, and deletions. But let's just say git commit stats. Okay, so what do you think git commit stats will take? It's gonna return the additions, deletions, and maybe error, but what should it take? Probably context, we'll need that. Yes, an access token. And maybe a duration. Okay. Uh, so, six will be a duration. So, context is easy. We get that by saying, App engine dot new context. Request. The access token is a little trickier. I think we need to update our session so it includes the access token. So access token. There's not three C's in access token. Um, so that's where we'll save our access token so we can read it later. Okay, so all I did was made our session struct have access token in it. And then inside of our Login here, we just need to add that here. So when I I save the email, I will also save the access token. Okay? So the access token will be available down here. So that's how I get the access token. Um, I do get session. And then I say session.access token. Okay, make sense? So here's how I get the context, I get the session, and here's how I get the access to it. Save it in the session. And then the 
the last thing, the since, is describing the duration, you know. And so I can say time dot now dot add negative time dot, uh, I think there's an hour times 24 times 30. So 30 days ago, right? Negative. 30 days. And this is failing because I haven't written the function yet, but let's go ahead and finish this. If error not equal nil, HTB error res. Okay. So now all we have to do is create that function. So step two was, well, I haven't quite finished step two. I need to replace my question marks with the, uh, and we'll just use format.sprint. Uh, and this will be the additions, and this will be the deletions. I don't know why it always selects the, it's kind of weird. Um, okay. Everybody follow on? Why format dot sprint there? Uh, it takes in anything and turns it into a string. It's just easy to, to uh, Turns it into a string? A string, S print. String, string. Print to string. Uh, and so <coughs> we get our context, our session, our access token, and since, which is we're just hard coding for 30 days ago. It's not exactly hard coding because it's dynamic based on the current time, but it's the duration is hard coded. Um, and then we're gonna we call this function get commit stats. We give it the access token and the since, and it will give us the additions and deletions, and we replace that in here. So step one was build a pre canned HTML thing. Step two was add to the HTML actual variables and a stubbed out function that returns things. Step three is to implement this function, okay? So to do that, we're gonna go in here, get commit stats, context, um, access token string, and uh, since, which was a time. That's going to return int int error. Uh, int uh, additions, deletions, and error. Okay. So that's the same function that we wrote over there. Let's make sure it all works together. Zero, zero, nil. If this works, I should see instead of question marks, zeros. Perfect. Though this is it's not actually correct. Let me re-log it in. The reason why is since we added the access token, that's not currently part of my session, so I need to re-log in to get it, uh, which we would figure out eventually. Uh, so now we have addition zero, zero. So if I change these, it should update, right? Whoops. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that, that is one way to solve this problem. We just go into GitHub, look at the stats manually, and put the values in, but that's not. We don't want to do it that way. We actually want to query. Um, okay, so uh, how are we going to do this? Can we help me out? How are we going to figure out how to do this? Um, I want to get the commit stats. I showed you where the commit stats are. They're on a single commit. So we have to look at every commit? Uh-huh. Yeah, you have to ask her permission as a user level if we can look at it? We do have to do that too. So I'll make a list here. Uh, add a scope. Uh, we're going to have to every commit. The GitHub, the GitHub API is actually got on the specify a sense until. That's right. That's where the sense will come in. So I think we have to look at every commit because it's, we can only get these stats out on a per commit basis. There may be other stats in. But let's just assume there's not. Uh, so we want to get every commit. Uh, so how, how do we get every commit? Yeah, there's a list endpoint. Yeah. So if we look at the API docs, this is what I'm getting at. We can list commits on a repository. So we will do this. List all commits for repository. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then for 
each commit. So get a single commit. Um, is like this. Okay. So, so we're sort of working our way down back up again. Okay. So I have a single commit, and I know this will give me my stats, which is what I'm trying to return here. <coughs> I have to get all the commits for a repository, and I'll sum up all these stats. Okay. How do I get that? So now I want to get all the commits for a repository. Now I want to see all the repositories the user has access to, um, or has done work on, right? And so if I look at repositories here, uh, I could list and stuff, but I think maybe it would be better to do this. Um, where does it list that? Organizations. List your organization. You guys understand what an organization is? So an organization is either your username on GitHub, you're your own organization, or an organization you're part of. So if you're part of a company, you could have code that's on that company's account. Um, so I, I have code under my name. I also have code under golang-book. That's an organization I created. Um, and so this would get you all the organizations the user is a part of. Okay. So now we have list organizations. But there's a step between the two, which is how do I go from an organization to all its repositories? And I can list that with another API endpoint, okay? And that's this uh, somewhere in here. It may do it in one of these. Yeah, this is an endpoint right here. Okay, cool. So list organization repositories is done this way. So so we'll get the organizations. Then for each organization, we'll get the repositories. Then for each repository, we'll get all the commits. Then for each commit, we'll get the stats. So that can be a loop within a loop within a loop. That's right. A lot of loops. <laughs> uh, I think we need some sort of a task, scheduled task. Uh, I think uh, if, if I'd be surprised if this works in under a bit. It might. It's probably going to involve several hundred, if not thousand, requests to get up the API in order to complete. Which might actually run into the limits. Yes. Uh, so, but we'll see how it goes. Um, okay. So this is going to get. If I were to do this all in one function. This would be a crazy function. And so I think it's better if we break it up, okay? Um, and in fact, I think it's better if we introduce something that will make this a little easier. Passing arguments like this gets kind of cumbersome. So what's typical is rather than have just a bunch of functions like this, we create a type. And we put them inside of the type. So I will have uh, context access token string. Okay? And so I make it a, a method. So I take API and I remove them from this. Same for this guy. That's cool. Yeah, it makes it a little easier, I think. Uh, you don't get lost in all the craziness. too far on the, see I have the little, it's kind of hard to see here, there's a line going up. Um, you can turn that on your editor. Yeah, that's an 80. All right, so these guys, when they do context here, it becomes 
What, what do I put instead of CPX here? API dot context. Because now the context is on the API, which is right here. Um, there's one up here. So I'm just updating. So this becomes API dot access token. This is API dot context. That's all. Okay, so now I just need to update it here. Um, instead of saying this, I have to create the context, I'm sorry, the uh, API. So I should add in here a new, and this is a pretty standard way to write this. You write a function called new GitHub API, it returns a GitHub API. What's handed the context, because that's going to be very common. And we just return ampersand GitHub API for the braces ctx colon ctx, okay? And with the access token, uh, we won't set in here, we'll set it with a dot, uh, but we could set it, but we don't always have it available. Um, because the first one of these to get the access token, obviously it's not set yet, so. I don't know where it happened, but somewhere over the last four weeks, that entire thing of address referencing and pointers makes so much more sense now. <laughs> The, the ampersand return to star thing. Yeah. And everybody's like, why did it star return to star? It's all very confusing. Um, okay, so now we have to do that in here. We change up here. We can do API colon equal new GitHub API handed the context, okay? And so now instead of saying get access token, we say API dot get access token. And then we take out the context. And this is the same way, api.getemail. And this time we don't pass it anything, which means we have to in here say api.access uh, token equal access token. Okay? So we're setting the access token here, and then we can call get the email. <coughs> and then down here, we just change it to be the same way. CTX, and then we say api.access token equal session means we need to move that down. And then this just becomes sense. Okay? Um, oh, sorry. API dot. Right, don't need that. Are we following? So we call it create a new API, set the access token on it, and then we can just call API get stats. And the context and the access token are inside of API. Uh, which just makes it cleaner for our methods, okay? Um, and that's why we tend to use, instead of having all these functions, we often make methods, just because it makes everything cleaner. Okay, so with that in place, we can write these guys, and I think we should break them up into separate functions, okay? So get commit stats, we'll get commit stats for every, for a particular user, okay? And so one issue with the way we have, have this written is that the user, the particular user, is not set in we're not passing it. The reason we're not passing it is the access token tells us who the current user is. So we don't really need that. If you look at all these endpoints, git slash user slash orgs, this is getting the organizations for the currently logged user, okay? And so that comes from the access token. That's how we get that information. Um, and so that's why we're not passing the particular user here. Uh, so we don't have to do that. But. So let's, uh, let's make some of these functions. So we'll have API GitHub API. And now let's call this Git Organizations. Um, what is this going to take in return? Yeah, the user uh, everything else is coming into the method. So it's not going to take anything? Yeah, I think it just doesn't take anything. And I think it returns a slice of string and an error. So I actually don't care about the other details of an organization. I don't care when it was created, who created it. I don't, I don't care about that. All I care about is the name. And this name is your GitHub username. Okay. And 
and that's all I care about. I want a list of all of those. All the organizations you're a member of. Um, so I'm just going to return to the slices here. Okay? So that's going to be that uh, method. So. And the next one will be Get repositories. Repositories. Now this one will take something. What will it take? Slice string. Uh, we could do that, but I think maybe we should just do one. So I'll put the organization. A repo? Yep. Organization string. And it's going to return. So, actually, yeah, owner here would be the organization, and the repo is going to be a string, so we can just return the strings. Uh, in other words, this is the repositories for an organization, so we don't have to return this. That's implicit. So we can just return the repo names. get uh, commits. So we want to get uh, all the commits for a repository. That takes the owner and the repo. So I think those will probably be our two parameters, right? And what does it return? You may also need to get emails to filter to only your own commit to the repo, not just that everyone's in that repo. Oh, good point. OK, that's a good point. So. Let's rename this from get commits to get uh, user commits. <laughs> and then we will pass in the user. We'll call it user name just to be clear. And it returns. Just addition, deletion, and error. Right. So actually, all we care about is the SHA. The SHA there is hash. It's a SHA one. Um, so maybe we should call this get user commit. Shots. Oh. We're still up there. Slice of string. You think there's more that needs to be added? So, get all of the commits for a particular repository by a certain user, but all we want are their IDs, not the actual detail of the commit. So that's what we're going to do with that one. And the last one get a single commit is actually we don't really need the commit, we just need the stats. So let's rename get commit stats to get summary stats or commit summary stats or something like that. And this one will just be get a single commit stats or get commit stats. Um, So what is this guy? We want the stats from a single commit. Well, it's all the same logic. You need your organization. You need your yep. repository. You need your shop. And what is it return? Additions, deletions. Yeah. OK, so these additions, deletions, I don't know about you, but that seems to, I don't know what that means. It's kind of confusing, right? Like, I just look and see an int and an int. I'm like, well, what is the meaning of those? So maybe we should add a type called commit stats and call it additions, deletions. So now, instead of returning int int, we'll return commit stats. that reads a little better. So now I know what I'm returning, okay? But otherwise, it's pretty, pretty much the same. Okay, so now we need to panic, not implement. So now... Are there returns required to return if you have more than one return? Sorry, what? Are 
the perimeter of cards and the return value? Yes. If there's more than one return? Yep. Okay. Um, right. And so over here, we have to change this commit stats to uh, get summary commit stats. Or commit summary stats. Here becomes stats.additions and stats.deletions. Okay. All right. Now we have all this work. Okay. So let's double check we didn't break anything. Just refresh. We should see the same thing we saw before because we didn't change anything. Okay. Um, right. So we have two, two routes we can go. We can implement these or we can implement this. In other words, we could start working on the thing that's going to call all of them, or we can start working on the individual pieces themselves. Once we finish all the individual pieces, then work on the thing that calls all of them. Uh, either way it works. Uh, you know, maybe we'll start with just one of these and see, see what we get. Um, so to list organizations, we have to do a get on slash user slash orgs. So what does that look like? Uh, so how do we, what do we need to do that? So I want to get the organizations from GitHub. You have to figure out where you send it. So you have to use the URL fetch. Yes, exactly. URL fetch. So we say client URL fetch dot client. Give it the context, which is API dot context. And so now we have a client, and we can say client dot get. The URL is right here. I think we've used a URL here, not that one. This one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, copy that, and save it as a constant. Uh, GitHub API URL that guy. Okay. And then I can just get rid of this. Stab that there. Now down here, that's where I can start. Okay. So now we have HTTPS colon slash slash api.github.com slash v3 or whatever it is. And then we have slash and the rest of it. That's what matches up here. Get slash user reports. Um, so that's what we want to do here. Whoops, not here, sorry. Here. So that's get slash user slash orgs. There's one change we have to make. What am I forgetting? You need your access key for these? Yes, access to key. Which I can get from API.access token. Okay? That will make an HTTP request. If error is not nil, then we return Um, okay, so now we have a response, and maybe the, the thing we should do here is, uh, is print it out so we can see what it looks like. Um, and so to do that, we have to remember to close the body of the response um, eventually. And then we want to read all the bytes, so we say, we're just going to ignore the error. Um, these colon equal uh, iutil dot read all. Hand it the response body, and then we can get that out like this. Uh, so this is .ctx. Uh, we'll call this get organizations response. Is percent v. We give it that. And then we will return nil and not implemented. OK? Do you need to string that since it's percent v? Do you, do you need to string it? It is. Send the bytes to 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 send the Thank you. 
probably. So I just save the stats here so we can return it equally. And then the organizations, is that what we'll get out of the organizations and we'll return if there's an error, we'll just return this. We should expect an error because I'm returning an error down here, okay? Uh, but as part of returning that error, we should see this info app, okay? So let's see if that works. Let me clear that and then refresh here. Not implemented, which is expected, but we get this organization response you need at least read org scope or user scope to list your organizations. So that's actually a very helpful error. It means that my scopes were wrong when I logged in um, because I didn't give it enough. So I, it says I need to add this. So let's add that scope to our list of scopes, uh, which is up here um, somewhere. Oh, it's in the, yep, thank you. Right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save these as a variable. Um, GitHub scopes equal. And I'm going to give it that. And the other one was user email. And then I'm going to use strings.join, which takes in the slice of strings and what you want to join them with. So GitHub scopes, and that's a comp. Okay, and now I'll just merge them together with commas between them. Um, and so now we have scope. And so our scope will be user colon email comma read colon or. Okay. So now we have two scopes. And if I go to the root, login with GitHub, I think it'll tell me, yep, because I modified the authorization. So I've added an additional mm -hmm. scope. So now it's, it's re-verifying. The other times it went here and went back because I'd already authorized it. Uh, so now it's saying organization teams read only access. That's the permissions that were added. Okay. Is that on the right? Does it exist? Yeah, if it was brand new, it would say something slightly different. But. Okay. So now we get our organizations. Okay. And so these are the organizations I'm a member of. I'm a member of three organizations. It's only showing one because when I authorized it, I only gave it. So I have to authorize each of them independently. Mm -hmm. um, and it said that at the bottom, which is sort of an interesting uh, issue. Um, so but uh, we only have one. Uh, but we have one. So now we have our list of organizations. OK. Are we following so far? Yeah. Um, and that's down here. So we, at this point, we have that response. That response was this JSON. This JSON is hard to read. So what we're going to do is copy that. And there is a nice JSON viewer online that we will just paste into here. And format. And that's a little easier to read. OK, so it has login and ID and URL. All we care about is login. OK? We don't care about the rest. Because all we need is the name of the organization. All this other stuff is like its uh, logo and stuff. So all we care about is this line. So how do we get that? So it returns an array of objects. Each object has a login property, and they're both strings, OK? So what I want to do here is I want to create our data is a slice of structs where it has a property called login, which is a string. Um, and that is JSON login. Okay, that's not actually needed, but it's a little more clear if I include it. So I'm going to include it. And then I use JSON.unmarshal um, the data, which is BS and ampersand data. And that returns an error, so we should look for that. Okay. So now I'll have a data filled in, and it will be a slice of each of these structs. As login, okay? The issue is I don't return a slice of structs, I return a slice of strings. So I need to convert this data. Um, and that's easy to do. I can just make names, make a, a slice of string the same length as data, 
okay, and then loop. So I, the colon range data, and then we'll just say names at I is equal to data at I dot, or we can actually just say V, V dot log, okay. And then just comment that, actually we can leave it in there. It might make debugging a little easier. Um, we return those names and no, okay. So let's walk through that again. Can you show me the JSON data this once more? Yeah. So if you have multiple uh, organizations, you'd have multiple structs there. Yep. Comma. Got it. Yep. So in this case, there's only one. But so data is a slice of struct login. We're throwing out the other fields. We don't care about them. So we get the login, um, and then we unmarshal the bytes we got into that, uh, and then we convert that into a slice of strings by just getting out that login name. Then we return this guy. Okay. So that will give us our list of names. Let's see if that worked. What is a uh, dict map called in JavaScript? A map is a map called in JavaScript? Object. Object. JavaScript object. Um, okay. So we have our organization. This will be the list of names. Okay. So this would be your username. One username. Now, if you're part of multiple organizations, you have more than one. Um, so we can say underscore organization colon equal range organization. So now we have each organization, and we want to e list each repository for each organization. Okay, um, and so it's going to be the same process, right? I'm going to say repositories uh, API dot get repositories and give it the organization. And then I'm going to loop over that. And I'm going to get the commits. So commits, error, colon, equal, ABI, dot, get, commit. Didn't I risk, risk, hold on, write that somewhere. User commit shots, that's what it's called. Um, And that will be the organization, the repository, and the user. Uh, so we're going to have to get that username from somewhere. Um, but we have all those commits. And then for each commit, so these are actually SHAs. Um, so let's list those. And then we have to get the commit. So we'll get the commit stats. Uh, so CS. Get commits. The organization, repository, and the shop. Okay? And then once we have that, so that's the get the single commit. What do we do once we have a single commit? That's right. So stats.additions plus equals cs.additions, stats.deletions plus equals cs.deletions, okay? Okay, so there's a couple things we need to fix here. We need to handle the errors. So if that's not nil, return uh, stats comma error. So we'll just paste that for the others. Um, so if, we, if we're not, those are getting in the way. Okay. So now we're handling the error. So if anywhere along the process it errors out, we just want to return that. Um, I notice we don't have the username, so we need to get that somehow. Um, so I think maybe what we'll do here is change session. Instead of email, we'll store the username. And so we have to get that. And so in our GitHub API, Instead of get email, we'll get username. And the issue here is that there's no, uh, the endpoint's a little different. So we should get that from the API at a different place. 
Um, that's under users, I think. Get a single user. I think you can just get slash user. Yeah, get the authenticated user. Get slash user, and it will return all this stuff. Um, and what we want login. is login. So we'll just get slash user. We don't care about the emails, so this will become slice of struct. Uh, actually, it's just a struct. And the login is a string, so we just change that to login. And then delete these two, because we don't care about them. Um, and then we just return data.login. Okay. So now we're getting the username instead of the email. That means we need to go in here and change it. Username, username, just one more, or not. Okay, so now I think we should add that to the GitHub uh, API, right? And so I want to do something like api.username uh, equals session.username, and that way we can keep it around. So I'll add it up here, username string. Uh, and that way it'll be accessible down below. So now our, our bunch of question marks down here, we can replace with API.usenet. Which means we don't really need to pass it, right? We can just pass it this way. We can just take it out here entirely, okay? Um, So we fixed that problem. We no longer pass in the user name because it's implicit in the API. It's inside of there. Um, the other issue here is that we're not passing the sense. So I think we need to add to this the sense parameter. And that means we need to go change it down here so that we use what was passed in. So that's sense time dot. Okay. So we should expect to see a panic when we run this, okay? Because we haven't implemented most of the methods. But let's just see what happens to make sure um, it's working what I expect. I actually need to uh, re-log in again. There we go. Not implemented. That's because we haven't implemented it. So let's start plugging these in. Um, instead of returning the not implemented, let's just return an empty list for these guys. So that we can get some progress. Um, our stats, commit stats, return stats, no. Okay. So we're just sort of uh, stubbing these out to return nothing. So now instead of panicking, it should give us something. Uh, there we go. 